Southern Music Research Center presents This is Southern Music Research Center, and you are listening to DJ Radu. Man, I remember I was in Titusville in Birmingham, and uh, a friend of mine came to me. He was like, yo, man, I got this tape. And I was like, okay. And it was a Run DMC cassette, uh, Raising Hell, probably. And that changed my life forever, man. It was youth culture. Everything I listened to before then was Billy Ocean, like my, my, my parents' music, Luther Vandross. But that was ours, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it was, it was taboo. It was like, it was like forbidden, you know what I'm saying? My parents used to, my cousin had an LL Cool J, I'm bad cassette. And it was like, man, he's saying bad words. You can't listen to that, you know? So it was, not only was it like youth culture, it was ours, it was also, it was taboo, you know what I'm saying? So the fact that, I guess more so the fact that our parents didn't understand it, but we understood it, made it seem like it was created for us, you know what I'm saying? So that made it seem like, well, if it's made for me, nobody else understands it, I need to help, I need to be a part of that because it's, it's for me, it's mine, you know? Off the top of my head, I'm going, Eric Ben Rakim paid in full. It's just a banger. And Rakim's always one of my favorite MCs. And that, that bass line. Bass line is funky, man. Rakim just so cool. Um, paid in full. Definitely Eric Ben Rakim. I'm gonna play some James Brown. If I had to play some, I'm gonna play some James Brown. So many dope tunes, blues and pants, funky president. James Brown, blues and pants, for a number of reasons. Number one, the joint is just funky. Number two, one of my favorite movies is Love Jones. They play blues and pants and Love Jones. They're doing Chicago stepping. But I'm a huge James Brown fan. Got to play some James Brown. And of course, at that period in time, Eric Ben Rakim, they were sampling James Brown heavy. So Eric Ben Rakim paid him for James Brown blues and pants. One of my favorite tunes right now. Archie Bell and the Drills, tighten up. Joint is just funky, man. That's some down south, you know what I'm saying, southern stuff right there, so gotta throw the south in there. Archie Bell and the Drills. Hey, James Brown, that's the south too, man. Gotta represent the south, man. My introduction to Dilla was maybe like 2000 or so. And at this period of time, I'm, I'm from the south. You know, and everybody knows me as the neo soul guy, the the, the, the hip hop guy. But at this period in my life, I'm a ball, MJG, Top Authority, Cash Money, you know, Master P. I'm all of that. And so I went to a friend's house, and he was like, "Yo, man, you need to check this stuff out." Okay, cool. I'm open. I've been listening to music all my life. I love music. And he put on uh, Slum Village. May have even been Climax. And when I say that changed my life, it literally changed my life. 
and people talk about I think I think I want to say they skimmed over the, the neo soul period I want to say they didn't necessarily touch on I, I want to say they, they didn't get intricate enough about Dilla and his influence for me and um, so when 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 for me personally my, my, my relationship with Dilla was he provided me with a different texture because as a DJ personally my philosophy on DJing is about exposure uh, because especially here in Birmingham with mass media there's so much that we're not exposed to uh, I always say that we're not a monolithic people but if you turn on 95.7 Jams, you turn on 98.7 Kids, you turn on Hot 107.7, you know, we playing rap and we playing R&B. But there's more music out there than rap and R&B. You know, we got blues, we got jazz, you know, soul, uh, et cetera. And, you know, I listen to Tribe, I listen to uh, Diggable, I listen to Gangsta, all that stuff. But it's like Dilla, the way, some, something about listen to that music at that point in my life it just completely changed everything my relationship with Dilla is based on the fact that he exposed me to so much more you know <laughs> funny enough man you know it fits into my family life because they know you know if I had an opportunity to DJ you know I'm out you know what I'm saying so 7 o'clock 8 o'clock you know if I got a gig at 8 7 o'clock 9 o'clock whatever I'm, I'm out you know but you know luckily you know it's my kids get a chance to come to some of my DJ gigs you know they they're familiar with the music you know they know how I get down it's funny like um my son says his favorite genre of music is jazz because you know that's he gets a heavy dose of that at the house you know my daughter she uh, started DJing um, she's nine years old now uh, we DJ on Twitch together she plays 45 she just started spinning 12 inch vinyl um, and you know my wife man she she already knows like uh, <laughs> uh, she knows the vinyl when she sees it you know what I'm saying you know whenever we go out of town she knows I got I got to hit the record store so no matter where we are we've been to Italy Memphis New Orleans no matter where we go you know what I'm saying so my family understands that hip-hop you know what I'm saying is a large part of my life um, and uh, luckily we were able to integrate it for uh, all of us and it's a part of all of our lives yeah